Hey everybody, it's Pokemon Coliseum! Boy! You didn't even see them coming anymore. Cause you said come. It's, it's uh, been, I think it's been a couple weeks again. This time it's not a big surprise though. A lot, a lot of stuff was going We've on. We've done a lot of social stuff. Yeah, that's Jeez. what I want to talk about on today's right. episode. So, is... serious question before we do do any of this yeah. do you want to see flygon on my team uh, or do you want to see this blue guy because flygon's way better um flygon absolutely did i teach this guy any tms yeah i taught it steel wing and dragon dance oh okay so i'm just gonna use i don't know just gonna keep him I got not good enough. I mean, I already gave Dragon Dance to, to Elteria. Well, fuck that other guy then. Yeah, I mean, Flygon would be nice to have, but I think I was like, I want to use Pokemon that I don't normally get to use. So, uh, I, I think I might be. The most misanthropic person that I've ever known. How do you feel? Other than perhaps you. Yeah, I don't think you're nearly as bad as me. We both really don't like people that much. And I feel like being together has not... It hasn't made it any worse. It's just reinforced it as, um... Acceptable? Yeah, nobody's really, like, confronting those... Nobody's really, like, telling you, like, oh, you're being a dick. Like, it's all in your head. People aren't that bad. It's like, we both reinforce those kind of values, you know? Well, I think that, uh... That, like, I... I've always hated everybody. But, like, I think that before, I always saw it as, like, something that I had to like try to overcome or something yeah and you always wanted to kind of like get out of your shell because did you ever feel like inferior to people who had an easier time a quote-unquote um, easier time talking to people and stuff not really it's more like i mean i don't have that hard of a time talking to people i have a hard time being understood by people mm -hmm. and understanding other people and where the hell they're coming from and like just having such different priorities from everyone else that like it makes communication really difficult because we're looking for different things in our communication and um like the more time passes the less i can convince myself that I put any value in, like, what other people care about or think. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I think it, it's odd. I guess it's 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 oscillated over time. It hasn't been, like, a linear line in any one direction. But, like, I think that before I met you, I was... In fact, I would say before I got famous, I was very desperate for connections, right? Like... I had my my small handful of friends that I had at home, and I cherished them a whole lot. Like, I talked them up all the time. I made it out like they were... Like, if you listen to early Digibros or, or any of my early material, like, you'll hear me praising my friends a lot. Yeah, because, you put the pussy on a pedestal. And, I mean, eventually you'll also hear me shit-talking them all the time. But, like, I shit-talk everybody. If I yeah. praise somebody, it means I think very highly of them. I mean, you if know? you shit-talk somebody, it means it was worth the effort to even... To even know enough to about even them. mention, you know? Um, I don't know if that's true. I'll shit-talk anybody, but, like... Word. uh, But, like, if I actually praise somebody, it must mean that I... You know, I think I... Like, it take I have to like somebody a lot to, like... To even acknowledge when they've done something right, you mm -hmm. know? Um, so, like, I had this group of friends, and I, I, like, clung to them, even though, like, most of my interactions were frustrating. And it's, it's really surreal 
when I look back on like the stuff that I was actually making throughout my life, because it gives me a much better insight into how I saw things at the time. Yeah. Um, like recently we were re-listening to a lot of the Trial of the Golden Witch backlog, and like a significant amount of the songs are about my frustration with the very friends I was making the songs with. I mean, there's an EP called the Broken Friendship EP, and that was the one, the only person who really seemed to, like, who, like, seemed to think anything of it was Marcus, who, like, clearly could tell that I was like, yeah, this is legitimately about you guys and my frustrations with you guys, you know? Yeah. Um, but, like, I had so many songs and albums just about, like, wishing that my relationship with my friends was different from what it was mm -hmm. like wishing that I could communicate with them more clearly or that they would just give a fuck more like I think that what I struggle with is that I I need to be like cared about a lot you know yeah like I need to have some attention in my life where people like are really giving a shit about what I'm doing because it's hard for me to give a shit about what I'm doing unless somebody else also gives a shit about it. You know, I wrote um, for a great example of that sentiment. It's a song, um, uh, I Wrote This Down, which goes like, Me on paper like it lasts forever, really all it has to pull is my lifetime, that's all that matters. Funny, funny, funny thing that how I'm the only one who will really always care. It's not you, even if you care just a bit. It's not the same. I wrote this down because I give more shit. I just care and I care and I never fucking stop. I love everything I ever wrote, even if it's all shit. I'm just a crazy self-absorbed like that. But then the important part. Uh, Please tell me if you start caring, if ever you do start caring. Uh, let me know when you start caring, I would care if you start caring. Because I was just like, it's hard for me to care, unless you care. And like, even if you don't care, I'm still going to make the stuff I make, because I like it. Yeah. But like, I can't bring myself to give it the kind of energy that it needs if no one else cares you know but like i i was always and you can find me saying this countless times i would always say that like as long as one person got it that was all i needed like i used to always say like yeah i'll like i'll i'll have the biggest audience possible but like i really just want to know that one person got it completely and that's enough you know um so over time do you have anything to, that you any I'm thoughts on any of this? By the, I'm just uh, what, I don't think there's much room to comment on. No, I don't think so either. I'm just making sure. <laughs> it looked like you were kind of a. Uh, you had an intense expression on, but I don't know if that's just because it's battle or what. Um, I'm just trying to do both at once. Yeah, it's a, it can be difficult. I know what it's like to be in the the driver's chair, of a live of a not a live stream, but. A, you know, video game and talk show. Dude, people who, like, keep up good conversation and drive, that's, like, the craziest shit to me. Yeah. Yeah, I do you, that all the time. I know. You, like, have to... Especially if you're driving somewhere new that you don't know. That's more difficult, for sure. Like, to actually have an engaging conversation with somebody, because... Yeah, I mean, you've seen how, like, I will slow to a stop in the conversation if I'm trying to, like, navigate, because I'm like, where the fuck am I? Yeah. Um, can relate. Same in video games. If I don't know what I'm doing in a game, then the the conversation tends to break down, or or if with the other person. Anyway, um, so yeah, like I I for a long time just felt like man, I wish somebody cared enough about not necessarily about me, but just about like what I'm up to, like because no one did. Like I was making so much stuff for so long. And, like, yeah. none of my friends really consumed my content or had anything to say about it, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, my brother Victor would. He would, he would like, consume most of it, but, he, you know, his impressions of it were usually just kind of like, yeah, that sure is a thing you made, you know? Like, 
especially of my videos, he would always be like, it's just like listening to you talk, like, you know, and I'm, I hate that. I, <laughs> so, so like, uh, or not even that he hates it, but that he's like, you know, that's all, that's all he's grown up with. It's just normal to him to listen to me talking. So like, there's nothing special about it. Um, so when I got on the internet, and I started, well, I mean, I've been on the internet forever, but, like, when I when I finally got onto YouTube and people started really paying attention, it was, like, so gratifying that it caused me to communicate a lot less with my offline friends. But, like, the stuff that I was doing on YouTube was, like, the most shallow, imaginable version of my content, you know? Like... It was deliberately boiled down to be, like, mass market appealing because I was trying to appeal to bronies. And the more I slowly, over time, made it more true to myself, the fewer and fewer people got it. But the ones who did got it more intensely. But, like, even being, like, as true to myself as, say, like, the S4 Diaries where I got, like, really esoteric with my writing, it's still not, like, me, you know? It's still, like, pretty... It's still, like, mostly boogie pop. It's not, like, truly out there shit, you know? Um, but when I met the PCP, those were the first people where I felt like all of us understood one another's, like, really out there shit. To, to yeah. some extent. Where, like, like, you know, the reason I... Like, all of... Everyone in the PCP's favorite thing by everyone else in the PCP is probably their weirdest thing. Like, none of us really cares about one another's like broad concept or you know broadly appealing stuff that much we care about the stuff that like really fucking like i love jesse's let's plays and shit you know and like and i mean I, I love plenty of his videos but i love ones that have like weird obnoxious stuff in them that other people can't get past and like i've always liked the give and take channel even more than the hypocrite channel because it's just weird experimental videos and stuff and like so, so meeting those people was like, I got that extra level of acceptance that I'd kind of been waiting for. Yeah. And so I, I kind of just stopped talking to my other friends. I'm going to do some, um, Coliseum runs because I want to level up my team a little bit. But, um, I haven't done it yet. eventually I started, like, even the PCP, like, there is definitely still a disconnect between me and them because of the fact that, like, it's hard for me to get them into the really eclectic sides of my taste because in the same way that, like, like, most of the group is not, like, extremely media- I don't want to say media literate, but, like, they don't consume a shit ton of media in general. Like, Nate does not consume that much stuff. He yeah, he's busy. He's he, a busy guy. Yeah. <laughs> ben Ben doesn't consume a huge amount of shit. He's more like he consumes mostly really fucking weird out there stuff that is super interesting and I love to hear about his taste for that reason. But like what he consumes doesn't have that much to do with what he produces, you mm -hmm. know? Um and then and I guess that's true for a few of the others as well. But like like, me and Jesse, I feel like, are the ones who have, the like, the most of, like, what we consume is evident in what we create, you know? But, like, in, in my case, I feel as though, like, the influences that I play to the most in my super personal content is stuff that those guys don't really understand. Like, when I make my music, no one in the PCP really listens to my music, you know? Because, like, they don't get it. They don't, they don't, like connect with the influences that I'm showing in there. They should be level 50. People in the comments be like, oh, go do some Coliseums to level up your team. And it's like... I mean, aren't you always fighting way higher level Pokemon, though? Yeah, but this is a lot. Um... Yeah, it's a lot. This whole game is a lot. This place actually... Like, the Coliseum actually looks really nice. I like the aesthetic and art design of it. Yeah. A lot more than anything else in this god awful game um so so yeah like i i never really had like the the level of intimate connection i wanted and the problem is that like 
when when my uh, when my audience started growing and I like established the 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 Patreon Discord and everything, I sort of had this feeling like any one thing I make, there is somebody who connects with it perfectly, but there's nobody who connects with everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, at the end of the day, there's always going to be some kind of frustration trying to communicate with any individual person. And, like, from my perspective, it's kind of like I'm looking out at the pack and going, like, okay, I made a thing and someone gives me positive reinforcement on that thing. But then someone else is like, I don't like it at all. You know, and then I make another thing, and it might be the opposite impressions from those same two people. And there's just like no way of pleasing everyone. Mm -hmm. And it just became really frustrating to realize that, like, I can't communicate with people as a collective entity. You know, everyone has their own thoughts and their own their own preferences, even within the realm of stuff I produce. And like, no one has a clear enough communication with me that I can like, you know, get closer to them, kind of. It's always, like, conversation breaks down, amazing, down in flames, chasing its own tail, you know, like, facing the fact that we can't tap into the same place, or a new type, um, wait, what's the line? Into the same place. Lest we in the same place. That can't be right. Whatever. This is the lyrics to The Other, one of my songs. Um... So all of this is until I met you. So you are like invested in all the stuff I do. You care about it just about as much as I do. You appreciate all the different stuff that I do. Yeah, and I think a lot of that has to do if we like we come from the same place. A lot of the yes. times like if we're coming from the same place and coming to the same conclusions about a lot of things. Right. In life it's like really easy to and, to understand each other. And granted, know. there's still like there's still a fair degree of disconnect, but it's only enough that it's like easy enough to work through. Yeah, and it helps that we're both we both like each other, so we're both curious about all the differences. Yeah. So we can. And I mean, like, because I I watch a lot of, I feel like most people come to the conclusion that like that like I don't know. Most people just expect life to be more difficult than I do, I guess. Because when I look at the world, I see I see like the the I I see ideals. I'm very mm -hmm. much an idealist. I'm always looking at like what I think things should be like. And I see people for instance in relationships where it's like they really love each other and this relationship might even last forever, but like their communication is so terrible. Because there's just such a huge amount of divergence between their two viewpoints and understandings. And so communicating at all is constantly working through misunderstandings. And to me, that kind of thing is exhausting and is like the opposite of what I would want yeah. out of a relationship. But I also see why if, if, you're, if you're just living like a normal life where everything just goes... Um, you know, by the books. Maybe you want that for some variety and spice. I think that might be why, like, there's sort of the stereotype that, like, women, like, a lot of women out there, like, enjoy fighting. That, like, they try to find somebody with an opposite personality so they can argue with them. And I think that's, like, bred out of boredom. It's, like, because it can be fun. It can be a fun challenge to try to see if you can, like, make your viewpoints, you know, if you can, like, change each other's minds or come to an agreement, um, you know, me and my mom, like, I grew up arguing with my mom all the time, and neither one of us gets that frustrated by arguing with each other, you know? Mm -hmm. My dad gets frustrated listening to us argue, or Victor does, but, like, me and my mom can just argue because of, like, the sport of it, because we both want to be right. So it's like a challenge to see like can I can it's not about actually being right it's can I convince you that I am right you know yeah um and like the better you know somebody the more interesting that push and pull is of like you know like how how what what fucking string of words do I have to put into your brain to make you see things the way I see them you know because what is the truth is irrelevant. You know, uh, like, in a lot of the time, there is no truth. So, yeah, like, 
it's it's it can be fascinating but like at the same time if you have other things in your life that are stressing you out then that's a lot to add on top of it you know and for somebody like me yeah a lot of people like go to work and like the last thing they want to do is have somebody yeah. fight fight their wants more because mm-hmm. like at work you're not going to get your way all the time and like you come home no. and like you kind of expect it to be like at least yeah. i would i'd expect it to be like oh i'm home i can relax because this is my like yeah. place that i've built and like for me having observed my parents you know like they my dad is very much like that like he's the type who if he has a stressful day at work he wants to come home and have no conflict and nothing in his way you yeah. know like and he'll come home like steaming you can tell and it's just kind of like all right let's just stay out of dad's way because like you know you can tell that if you if you attempt communication at all with anybody probably there's going to be disagreement involved you know and like my parents have always been like they definitely struggle to communicate with one another you know like and with with anyone my parents are just like communication breaks down so quickly with them they just don't know what information to convey to you like they're they're both sort of the type who they know what they think is going on and they just assume you also know yeah and don't really tell you what they think you are supposed to know um which is why i know so little about how to live in this world like over time it's really like boggled my mind how many things I, in my adulthood, have observed that my parents were doing all along and just never thought to tell me, you know, about, like, how to talk to people or how to, like, live life and do things. Like, they've learned how to do all that stuff, but for some reason, they just think that that comes naturally. They just don't think to, like, explain how to be a person, you know? Um... Which I think has a lot to do with why I'm like this. Because I didn't... I, I was not really given the kind of guidance I think most people are. On, like, manners and, like, how to act around other people. And, like, how to fit into society. And, like, what to do when you leave school and grow up. And I think part of that's because my parents wanted me to be different from them. Because they were like, oh, our lives were hard. And, like... You know, you're gonna, you're smart, so you're just gonna go to college and you're gonna do everything better than we did it. So why would we need to tell you what we did when you're gonna figure out how to do it better? And it's like, from who? Who am I gonna figure out? Am I just gonna magically understand how the fucking world works? I mean, I think a lot of it has to do with like their parents weren't able to like help them in that way, so they really don't know how to pass on the torch. Like, my parents were super, uh, they pushed manners and like politeness and and those kind of like formalities that aren't really expected because like i would always like meet people and they'd be like oh your kid is like too polite almost they like kind of made me beta yeah uh that's unfortunate my parents like (laughs) i mean that definitely changed the more i got fucked over the more i was like i think my i mean like when it comes to stuff like that my parents kind of explain things in a way that was like here's how other people act but you don't have to be this way you know yeah like there's a lot of that um but in any case like so i i think that for someone like me who has i kind of have like i don't want to say it's like the most stressful job in the world because it's it's fun and i like doing it but it's like when you have to do everything yourself, it means that you're always doing your job, in a way. You know? Like, other people... This is something that me and Jesse have talked about a lot over the years. That, like, if you work a normal job, you clock in at 9, and you work until 5, and then you go home, and the job is yeah. not there And you don't really you. have to, like, think too much outside the box. You don't right. have to, like... Like, certain things are thought up for you, or, like, have yeah. been long-standing parts of the job. Um, when you do a job like mine, <laughs> all day, every yeah. day is what is the next step? Like, what am I working towards? What's going on? Like, what do I need to change? Because, I mean, I think there's a lot of people who do, like, and, and granted, 
you need to remember that when I say my job, I mean my job. I am not a YouTuber. I am Digibro. Digibro's job is different from the job of quote unquote a YouTuber. Because if you are like someone who, let's say, I'm trying to think of like a, a very structured channel, like a very average type of channel. Like, like, I mean, we could even go with PewDiePie, right? Daily vlogs, about 10 minutes long. So like, if you're PewDiePie, your job is have something to talk about today, step into your little cubicle you've built for yourself, your weird standing cubicle room, you know, record yourself doing this thing for a while, send those files to another computer, edit that video, and then it's done, and you got the rest of the day. Yeah, or you can, like, break it down even even further to people who, like, just write a script once a week and send it yeah. off to editors or, like, people who do exactly. a new show, and it's, like, they don't have to think about funny funny skits. They just have to, like, do the same shit they do every, yeah, exactly. every episode. So my job is having no idea at any moment what is going to be next. And so it's, like, constantly... What am I doing next? What's going and like, what should I change? Because I'm never satisfied with where I am. I always want to be doing even better, um, and so I'm constantly like shifting my whole paradigm of what I'm doing. Because, you know, I'll do one thing for a while, and then I'll kind of see that like I'm not growing. So I go, well, let me try to try, you know, try to do something that'll help me grow. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it makes me shrink, and I go, oh shit, oh this is the whole wrong decision. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and then like. You know, and I'm also in a position where, like, there's just, like, stuff's always coming up that I that I have to worry about in my day-to-day -day life. So, for me, the last thing I want to have is also a relationship where I argue all the time. And when I say relationship, I don't just mean romantic relationship. I mean, like, any communication yeah, with other like, humans. Yeah, if, like, Tom was hard to be with if he, he like he wouldn't, always i wouldn't have invited him to live always with me, had you know? complaints about like how we're living and like always right. had to throw his two cents in or like didn't pick up after himself it'd be like yeah and like for for me it's just like i want all of my interactions to be like can like breezy and not difficult and just like we both know what each other wants we communicate that and then it's over and like there, sometimes I want to have conversations. That is fun. That can be fun. But, like, there's also a huge difference in the flow of conversations between people who get each other and people who don't. And if you listen to the PCP, you'll hear how sometimes, because of the fact that, like, we're, we're not quite getting each other, there are times where we'll have what feels like we're at the entrance of a conversation and it goes on forever. You can really see this in the uh, the, the Delta Rune episode, which I, I still enjoy this. Like, even when conversation goes this way, I think it makes for a good podcast because it shows you how far these two ideologies can break down and how divergent people can really be yeah. in their thinking. Yeah. You, you would get this a lot on Biggest Problem in the Universe as well, um, which is where, like, we were basically on the first point. But trying to get everyone to understand why everyone else felt the way they felt took, like, a fucking hour on this one point, you know? But then, like, if it was something where we had both understood where one another were coming from right from the get-go on that first point, the conversation could have progressed into a whole other realm of other things, you know? And so, like, when I talk to you, we cover an amazing amount of ground. Like, if you and I go for a walk and we have a conversation, we'll fucking tackle, like, ten different topics in the span of an hour. Mm -hmm. Whereas, like, you know, again, PCP, like, Deltarune, it took an hour to get past the first initial conceit that anyone brought up, you know? So, like, I do, so I prefer to communicate with people who I feel like I don't have to explain my logic every single time I open my mouth. And that is very difficult for me to find. There are not a lot of people who I feel like get my logic or get where I'm coming from right from the beginning. And so I feel like most of my communication, I'm constantly having to backpedal and explain myself in more depth. And like, especially like, that's something that has been frustrating for me with communicating with other members of the PCP as of late is that like, I try to 
say something and it's like right off the bat we don't understand each other and now I have to break down why I'm saying that thing when I didn't want to get stuck on that you yeah. know and with you I don't feel that way like and I know it's not that you necessarily just like automatically agree with or understand everything I'm no, saying you probably just let of, a lot of shit slide there's plenty of things that like I think we both have completely different understandings of like uh huh but I'm able to accept that, like, this is the point that you're coming from. Right. And that it's besides the point. I'm not going to, like, it would be a waste of my time to try to convince you to think in a completely different way. I'd rather see where your train of thought was going and see, like, yes. how I can help that particular train of thought. That's what is, that, that you put it beautifully. That's exactly why talking to you is, like, soothing and therapeutic and makes me feel good. And talking to anybody else is a fuck, is, like, pulling teeth. So, like, for instance, as a great example, um, there was a PCP episode where I was like, it's I, I, I basically said something like, why would I um, read, like, the source of a book instead of, like, listening to someone describe it, like, the points, you know? And, like, it was kind of, like, dismissed out of hand as, like, an insane stance. And the thing is that I don't ever say anything that I couldn't back up with logic. That I don't have, like, a long amount of, like, of, of you know, reasoning behind it. But something I really can't stand is being rejected on premise. Mm -hmm. I can't stand when someone tells me, like, oh, what you just said is insane. And then it's like, instead of arguing about why I think that... I'm now having to defend the idea that the stance has sanity behind it, you know? Like, I feel like conversation gets bogged down with me a lot because of the fact that, again, yeah, I get rejected on premise. It's like, the thing I said, um, just the other person, like, can't conceive of how it could be true, and therefore they immediately assume it's untrue and that I am crazy. Yeah. And this is something I get a lot from my viewers that drives me fucking insane. Because I will express a thought or opinion online, and then I'll have viewers who act like I must have just come out of fucking nowhere with this, and like I didn't think it through at all. Even though, like, when has that ever been the case? Like, the entire reason that I have this career is that I'm somebody who can make well-reasoned and intriguing points and explain myself and I'm down to explain myself when people approach with curiosity not when they approach with rejection when someone's like huh okay I can see why you might think that how did you come to that conclusion or like hmm I don't see things that way but why do you think that then I'll be like, here's my explanation. When someone's like, Digi, how could you say that? Don't you know X, Y, Z? How could you be so stupid? It's and like, it's especially like, the PCP, well, you like, don't get to know. They, know, they know who you are, they know what you stand yeah. for. It's like, okay, yeah, can we like... We don't need to fight about this every single episode. I mean, when it comes to them, I'll just scream at them because I. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's it's not so bad with them because of the fact that I can scream at them. That like they are my friends, and I can and accuse the them of being <laughs> stupid, and I yeah. can say like "fuck you," like listen to what I have to say. I'm smarter than you. Get fucked, you know. But like when it comes to my viewers, it's like. I don't know how to not be a dick if I'm going to respond to a lot of what they say. And that's where where conversation breaks down for me is that, like, I am an asshole. I do look down on people. I do, like, I do feel, like, a knee-jerk revulsion towards most of what people say. And when I go to respond to people, like, that's what bubbles to the surface first. Like... The amount of comments or responses that I have deleted of, like, just a train of insults is in the thousands. You know, like, where I... Not deleted as in I posted it, but, like, that I wrote it out and then erased it. Like, 
on all my videos all the time in my discord and stuff like people will say something and I'll just start you fucking moron how could you pot and then I just delete it and I just don't respond yeah you know because it's Smart. like it's like you're either gonna get that or nothing because like I'm not going to try to calmly explain myself if I don't feel like I've been respected in the first place yeah. you know like you'll find plenty of places where like someone respectfully like asks me for more information or like disagrees but wants to know where I'm coming from and I give I'll, I'll fucking dedicate all day to those people if somebody approaches with respect I'll give them fucking a 10 page response you know I'll be like oh baby I'm sorry I gotta fucking respond to this discord message but like when people approach with with that other attitude I'm just like what? I'm not gonna fucking waste my time yeah, on you if you're, if you're gonna act this way right from the get go you know but ev almost everyone's like that. And, like, it's just... All interaction for me feels like I'm just being put through the ringer. It yeah. always feels like I'm just struggling to churn through information. And I think that there was a point when you and I first started dating... Actually, well, like, we'll say a few months into us being together, like, living together... I started to become, like, I was very much Mr. Sunshine. I was like, now that I've got someone in my corner, somebody who, like, understands me completely and, is, and, and you know, is communicates with me in a satisfying way, now I feel like I can approach other people more openly. Like, I feel like now that I'm satisfied, like, because it's like my, uh, my hit points are higher. You know? Yeah. Like, I can take a few more blows because I've got this extra shield protection on, in a way. Um, so there was a period of time where I got, I had this, like, I had this big ego death thing when we were smoking lots of weed where I was like, my content isn't worth anything to me and I want to work with other people so I can make better stuff. Um... And I still think that I could make better stuff with other people. However, I also just hate people. <laughs> and I feel like every when you work with other people, everything's exacerbated. It's yeah. not just like... Unless it's like super simplistic, you know? Like me and Tom doing I Am Games is like the most bare bones style of collaboration possible. Because it's something that doesn't really require any extra effort on either of our parts, you know? It's like... It's like we're, we're both here. All we have to do is set things up and hit go. Um, but, like, there is there is some... I'm sure there's more difficulty, really, for him, where it's like, I've had several scripts I've thrown away, you know, even after he did recording of the audio, that I was like, oh, this isn't good enough for me. And, like, he's had to put up with me, like, always, like, you know, doubting what games we want to pick and not wanting to cover anything other people have talked about and, like, all that shit that he doesn't understand why I'm like that at all. You know, and like I've kind of just been manning the ship, and then also like d uh, ditching out on live streams because uh, we were busy. You know, like so. I mean, you didn't ditch out on the one a couple of days ago. Like you said, you weren't gonna be on it. Right, but you, like you just happened to come home like before it ended. But like yeah. we'd been off all day doing shit. Yeah, I mean, we could have planned around it though. Like, well, I guess we did ultimately. I but mean, you know what I mean though. I'm not saying I'm not like. I'm not insulting myself. I'm not saying I did something wrong. I'm just saying that, like, these are the difficulties of yeah. working with another person, yeah. you know? I know? It's like, sometimes you have to do the stream by yourself because the other guy's not there. And, like, he spends 45 minutes trying to set it up and ends up doing a game dev stream instead. Um, so, like, you know, so even on that rudimentary level, there are complications. And, like... I'm always reminded that the reason I do this job the way I do it, and it's always been the case, is strictly because I didn't want to have to work with other people. That was always the reason that I didn't take the, the brand deals, that I didn't take the other stuff. It had nothing to do with, like, integrity per se. It was like, I don't want to work with this company. I don't want to have to meet their needs. Yeah. I don't want to work on someone's timetable. I don't want to do collabs because I'm always waiting on people. Like, even the, like the really great collabs that I do manage to do, like for instance, if I get Jesse to be on a rap verse with me, that motherfucker will take months to get me my verse, you know? I'll have three albums done before he gets me my verse. 
both Jesse and I know it took like months to get their verses at, you know each Not time surprising. we've done it like and like working with Davu like initially was because it was very easy it was just like I send something off to him he gets it done I pay him a reasonable amount but now that like his whole fucking livelihood rides on working for me it's been like way more complicated it's been more of a, a strain you know mm -hmm. and like he works very hard to keep it from being too much of a strain because he knows how I am, but, like, it can be a strain to work with. So, like, all in all, it's just, like, the more I put myself around other people, the more I remind myself that, like, I'm not built for dealing with other people. I'm just not, like... And, and I... I don't feel bad about it. like I decreasingly feel bad about it because for a while I just thought let me let me switch over a little bit I fucking can't take bloomers me neither I cannot take the fucking bloomers so to explain what I mean we, we've been calling ourselves doomers that our generation is the doomer generation but there's two different sides of the doomer coin the other side of the coin is the bloomers, the people who seem to just get energy from simply being alive and are happy about everything and think people are great. Um, because I feel like the bloomers all think that that is something that you can just switch on. That like, why are you miserable when I'm happy? I'm proof that anybody can live this way. And I'm just like, get fucked. It's, yeah, and it's like, I don't think that it's miserable to to be a little antisocial. To or like, even a lot antisocial. Yeah. I, I'd be more miserable trying to overexert myself around other people and like pretending to have all this energy. Right. Like to put on that act. Because like, I'm content to just like... To be in the gray. Here's some call-outs. First. Oh, jeez. First, Wada. Wada, one of my fans, who, like... I'm getting my... Really looks wrecked. down on people for needing alcohol. He's like, oh, whenever people are like, I need alcohol, I'm like, oh, well, I've got, like, a natural high. I'm, I'm energetic just by being myself. Well, good for you. Get fucked. Some of us can't do it. Some of us just can't be around people in our natural mind state because it's fucking infuriating. And if I didn't have to be around anybody, including myself, uh, I probably wouldn't need to do any drugs. But I don't... I can't take people, you know? Like, when I'm around people without alcohol, I just feel like shit. And I need the alcohol to put me in a mind state where I can deal with people. Because, like, I just find people draining. I find it impossible to be true to myself and my intentions. And, like, once... I mean, it, like, honestly, it depends on where you're meeting with people. And, like, it, obviously you don't drink all of the time. Like, you don't drink to go to the grocery store. Cause... Well, that's not dealing with people. That's just being I in mean, public. like, to have a beer when there's a bunch of people over at your house... Because yeah. you're, like... This is what I'm talking about. I this is what Wada is, like, Yeah, against. I know, but, like, I don't think you should say, like, you need alcohol, because, like... Alright, well, you don't have to... Like, we're talking in memes here, but I let's know. not try to take it too seriously. Like, um... I don't... I mean, like... I would rather not hang out with anyone other than you or a few a small number of close friends one at a time without alcohol does that make more sense you can yeah. support that claim like when i have to be around more than like two people i'm just endlessly frustrated because again i'm used to being rejected on premise for the things i say and in order for me to clarify myself, I have to talk at length. And guess what nobody wants to listen to when there's more than two people in a room? Is someone talking at length. No one wants to listen to your clarifications. No one wants to fucking get to the heart of the matter. It's just like... It's all mob mentality. It's all whatever the most people in the room think is the truth. 
Mm -hmm. And when you're somebody whose viewpoint tends to be the most divergent in every group you're in, then it means that you're always at odds with everyone. And you've got two options. You can either be sober and constantly strung along by what everyone else is doing because you don't want to argue. Or you can be drunk and belligerent and argue the entire time, but it's fun because you're drunk. That's kind of how it breaks down for me. How do you feel about this? Do you understand that this... I understand what you're saying. It really depends on the company and, like, yeah. where we're, like... If it's, uh, like, a couple girlfriends or, like, one person, like, I wouldn't even want to drink. No. But if there's a ton of people coming over to your house being, like, doing their thing and you just, like, want a beer to be comfortable because, like, you don't really know these people, you kind of want to, like... It even if I the do atmosphere. know these people... Like, I, I feel... I'm just, like, using, like, recent examples, I guess. I am, too. Like, <laughs> when I was in college, like, to hang out with my, my friends, I wouldn't need to drink. But if I, like, wanted to go out to, like, a party, I definitely needed to drink. Because if you're not drinking, it's not fun at all. Well, this is kind of why I'm trying to say that I am, like, the ultimate misanthrope. Because I need to drink to be around people I actually like. Like, even... Like, when I'm around... That doesn't sound healthy. Well, then I just, I mean, what are my options? Not be around anybody or not drink? Probably, like, you know, limit how much you're drinking. Limit how much you're socializing. Well, that's what I'm saying. Either Work not be around all the people time. or not drink. I've already got the solution. I'm already living the solution. Yeah, I know. I mean, I don't drink all the time because I don't hang out with people very yeah. often. Um, I do drink out of boredom as well, but like... Um, but you get where I'm coming from here. Definitely. That like, when, when I'm around... Like, let's say... Let's say there's three people and then me. So four people total. Like... And let's say that uh, all three of the other ones want to go to uh, Steak and Shake. And I'm like, Steak and Shake sucks. And everyone else wants to go there, then the it's not going to be like, hey, why do you not like Steak and Shake? Let's try to come to an agreement on somewhere that you would like to go. It's going to be like, you don't like steak and shake? Oh, fuck off. You know, it's going to be like, yeah. It's going to be like, "Oh, li look at this guy. This guy doesn't want to do the thing everybody else wants to do." And when when I am in that moment, I'm just like, "Can I go home? Can I just go home? Can you guys all fuck off then?" Like I don't want to go do the thing I don't want to do, you know? And like that's the situation I find myself in every time with anyone I've ever been around, you know, mm -hmm. with the exception of you. And like and again, if it's just two people, it's it's not so bad. Like that anyone from that same group, it might be different if it's me and them because if they're like hey, let's go to Steak and Shake and I'm like I don't like Steak and Shake. And they're like, "Well, where do you want to go then?" And I'll go, "I want to go here." And then they might go well, I don't want to go there, but we can keep going back and forth like that. But, like, because of the fact that it's just two people, there can be no mob. There can be no three-on-one. There can be no dog pile, you know? Yeah. And, like, because I am who I am, I'm always at the bottom of the dog pile, I feel like. Yeah, and so, I would say that's fair. So, like, and again, like, when you're at the bottom of the dog pile, you really have two options. You can either succumb and just do what other people want you to do or you can aggress and try to bend everyone to your will and for me i'm if i'm sober and i'm just kind of resigned to the idea that i'm going to be hanging out with these people like if i don't feel like me making it like doing what i want is more important then i'm just going to be like I relinquish control. I'm just gonna escape to the back of my mind and I'm not gonna talk. Like, I'll probably just be quiet the whole time because all I'm thinking is, I don't wanna be here, you know? Mm -hmm. I wanted to go somewhere else. So like, I'm not having fun, I'm, I'm gone, you know? Whereas like, if I'm drunk 
I can at the very least be belligerent and let everyone know how I'm feeling. Like, even if I end up getting roped into the thing I didn't want to do, and besides, it might be more fun because I'm drunk. It'll you know? most definitely be more fun as long as, like, you're not a sad drunk. Yeah. <laughs> or, like, being I'm, too belligerent. I'm not a sad drunk usually. I'm usually, uh, I usually have a good time when I'm drunk. Yeah. You know? Uh, I've never gotten, like, crying drunk except for the one night I don't remember on my 21st birthday. Like, <laughs> Usually when I drink, I feel better, unless I'm al alone. That's when I'm a sad drunk, you know? Yeah. Uh, but, like... So, yeah, when, when someone tells me, like... I realized that Wishkesh was so tiny. Look at that guy. When, when people act like, Ugh, you need alcohol to have fun. So, number two call out, fucking Munchie. Munchie, who came over, and it was like... Him and Kaze don't drink, and they're kind of uppity about it. They're kind of like, Ugh, you would think that we would want to drink? You know, like, oh, you, you're you drunk? Okay. And it's like, yeah, I'm drunk to deal with you guys. Like, I'm drunk to deal with being trapped in a mob scenario where the people I'm hanging out with are Munchie, Ben, and Kaze, who all agree on everything and have the same viewpoint. And then Tom, who is neither here nor there. And then me, you know, and you. And, like, you just kind of you know, are, like, in my corner, but, like, I'm I'm facing the, the united front of these three people and their mob mentality. It's yeah, like, and they all gang up on you. Right. Because, so, like, it's funny to gang up on Digibro. It's always funny to gang up on anybody who's that guy. Yeah. That's what it means to be the other, you yeah. know? And that's what my life is about. And that's what my life has always been like, you know? Like, back at the lunch tables in school all growing up, I was the guy who got ganged up on. I was the guy who had the most divergent opinion, and, e like, I hung out with nerds, and I was the guy who the nerds didn't, I mean, they're the you know, worst about with. it. Yeah. Because I feel like people like that have been subjected to that kind of treatment by think, everybody, so they just, like, deflect it onto people that they don't think, like... I think you know what it is? It's that, like, nerds, they, because of the fact that they think a certain way and it seems like everybody else is wrong yeah then they get it in their head that they think correctly oh no they're, they're like they, the worst people to hang out with yeah they're people like that and so when they get into a group of other people who think the same way they do and it reinforces this idea that like they were correct all along it's like all of them think that they are the most correct mm -hmm. you know and then so if you're if you're even more off base than they are, then you're like, just, you're just retarded, you know? Like, you're not a nerd, you're just retarded. And that was kind of me growing up. It's like. He literally went into him. Like, when he got knocked back, he went into the trainer. That's amazing. And it clipped into him. I just, it, I guess what. Oh no. It, it just, like, it pisses me off that I still can manage to get treated that way in light of what I have done and who I am. Yeah, like... You know? You're the one whose house everybody's over at. Like, I'm, even with your friends, I'm, like, back home. Amongst it's like, anybody who I know, I am the most successful. I've gotten all the things I that mean, I wanted in life. I mean, that's why it's fun to make fun of you, right? I've it's gotten... Cause... I, mean, I mean, it was like this long before I was successful, yeah. but, like... There's definitely an element of, especially among, like, my friends I mean, now. that's why I think people do it now. It's just because, yeah. like, I mean, it's not that big of a deal, but it's, like, do you realize, like, this completely changes the atmosphere of what we're doing? And, right. Like, it makes it difficult to kind of... Yeah. It, why would you want to hang out with people who treated you like that? Like... Yeah. Exactly. If you're not part of the joke, That's like, how I feel. When, when like, when, when people, like, shit on me, I'm just like, well, th I'm not having fun, you know? Like... Yeah. And... But it just... It's so weird to me, especially with, like, when, when people who, who know me online... Like, when I raise a point and it gets dismissed out of hand because it doesn't coincide with what those people already think, I'm just like, why would you out of pocket think that I... Am just being retarded like why would somebody who through the strength of their their thinking and decision making and general knowing what they're talking about and doing why would that person be the one you dismiss out of pocket right away 
you know, just because they said something you didn't immediately agree with. It's like, don't you think that person would have put more thought into it? Don't you think that that person is at least worth listening to? Not saying I'm always right, just like, why would you think that I am just shitting words out of my face ever when all I do is think about things I'm going to say and then say things, you know? And so, like, and it, I, I understand some extent of why this happens in places like comments and on the internet is that everyone feels crowded. And I, I know this because sometimes, you know, I can accuse myself of having done this to people. Where, like, if you come into my live stream and you say something like, Eureka 7 sucks, I'm going to be like, what the hell's wrong with you? You know, like, I'm just going to out of pocket dismiss that you said that because of the fact that I know I'm not going to get a lengthier explanation from the fucking chat. You know, like, if I met you in person and you said that, I might be like, you know, well, why? Why do you think I so? Mean, and try to, like, engage a conversation. You're, you're doing a live stream. Like, it totally right. derails whatever you were doing trying to entertain, like, a bunch of people. That person uh -huh. is... Is not supporting their claim. They're just saying this sucks to like rile you up or something, and it's just like, hey man. And I I appreciate that. I think some of the time when people do that disagreement out of hand, it's because they don't think they're going to get it. They're not going to get time. They're like, I'm just one in a sea of voices. So like, rather than try to give a nuanced explanation of why I feel this way that you might not even read, and yeah. in fairness, I might not. But, like, if you give me the short buzzword version, I'm definitely just going to think you're an asshole. Like, I'm not, like, you're the, the, it's not like if you try to get it in fast and say it mimetically, that's going to make me more likely to respond. It's just going to be more likely to piss me off, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and maybe occasionally that can result in me explaining myself, but, like, you have to use the right words. That, I mean, that's ultimately what it usually comes down to, is I'm only going to explain myself if someone approaches me with the right words. If somebody asks the right question, or, like, phrases something the right way, that it triggers something in my mind that makes me know what to say in yeah. response, you know? But, um... For a different kind of... Like, you know, I've been talking more about, like, me actually, like, actively active bitterness towards people but even beyond that like I just I just get drained generally from being in situations where there's more than like two or three people yeah me too um it's called being an introvert it's like an actual thing there are people yeah, who I know if you get your energy from other people and there's a lot of people like that you're extroverted but most people are introverted or become that way when they're older yeah and it's funny because I get tons of energy from being around you but it's like like I get energy from people if it's one person but like any more than that and it's just like you know again because I feel like I, I can't I can't explain myself I can't explain my logic and I think too differently and it's like if I'm in a group setting you don't want my suggestion because it's not going to benefit the group it's not going to be the thing you all want to do. It's no. not going to be the words you all want to hear. It's going to be, you know, something that if you are legitimately interested on a personal level and you want to spend time getting to understand, then that's one thing, you know. But, like, um, for the most part, if I just want to, like, coast along with the group, I'm just going to shut my, my mind off, you know. And so for the last two days, we were celebrating your birthday and your dad's birthday by hanging out with your family. And like, they're all fine people who I don't mind being around. I just, I don't know how to talk to them because like... And with my family in particular, I don't really think that we know how to talk to each other. No. Like, we kind of hang out as a group, but we don't hang out as individuals. Like, we don't really have conversations with, with yeah. each other about things going on with our lives we just kind of talk about what is and going on in the now more than that everyone in your family is kind of evasive of doing that like there's almost a feeling like nobody you're not so much but like your dad and brother and sister are kind of like they don't want to get into their 
things that I would they're say in. it's it, like I'd say it's more of the opposite because I don't really like to talk about like I'll talk about like things that I'm interested in, but like I don't really like to talk about or have much to say. Let me let me fr rephrase this. You don't like to bring up things, but when someone asks you what's going on with you or like what your feelings are on something, you will start to go in depth. Whereas like I feel like a lot of your family if asked would try to evade the question and give as little information as possible. Yeah. Because there's kind of a sensation you, you your family is all very like ironic and like postmodern meme and stuff and they very much like to just be in this kind of nothing matters state of like I don't care about anything what do I look like a faggot like I don't care about things I don't do things you know I mean I think a lot of the reason like we are my family tends to do events like go out somewhere for our birthday instead of like do something in is because yeah. we want to escape from the stuff that like we don't want to talk about because it's just like whatever right well, I mean, in a, a lot of the cases, it's not, it's just not that interesting, at least to themselves. No. Like, you know, your dad's working, your brother's not working, yeah. your sister's working. So it's like, I'm sure they all just want to go out and do something fun. Yeah, like my sister, like all she worries about and thinks about is work. So like she's not going to want right. to talk about it. But it's, it, I guess like, it, I have a really difficult time putting myself into that kind of like chatty small talky mimetic mindset like i'm not the type who can I just mean, like i love i love hanging out with my family because like i would rather talk in memes yeah like well we that's just like make memes and, and jokes and that's it like hanging out with you and your family is it's weird for me because like obviously you are comfortable with all of them because you know them and you know what that atmosphere is like and you know how to yeah. like hang out with them i'm just like lost like, I don't know what to say or what to do or, like, how to be because I'm not used to that atmosphere, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like, again, I'm used to unbroken soliloquy. Like, because my dad talks the same way I do. My dad is, like, he starts rolling and he doesn't stop. Yeah. You ask him, like, what's going on with work? And you're going to get a 20-minute story about what's going on at work. You know, he's going to give you every minute detail, and my dad does not know how to tell a short story. So, he will often forget what the point of his story is while he's telling it, as will I. Um, nice. My mom, likewise. She's going to give you a full, like, my mom will come home from work, and she'll just start going. And she'll talk too. for 45 minutes, you know? Um, and if I have an idea that I want to communicate, I'll do the same. Um... All, in every one of our cases, the rest of the family is not going to pay attention through that entire story. But, like, that's how we communicate, is long, unbroken stories about what's on our mind. And so, like, when I'm with your family, it's, like, a lot of japes and, and jabs and, like, you know, making fun of each other in, like, funny little ways and, like, quips. And I'm not, like, I don't have the mental faculty for that. I don't, like think that way I don't think in like I don't go around expecting everything to be funny all the time I guess you know like I don't know how to put it um it's like every once in a while I have a funny thing that I can throw in and well you know I, it really does have to do a lot with like how I grew up because it was always like if you were funny or you got more attention yeah like we didn't really like we did talk about serious stuff, but, like, things were kind of hard for my family for a bit, and... Yeah. I was, like, living with... My mom was kind of out of the picture, living with my dad, and my dad isn't really kind of, uh... You know, he's... He's not really the kind of guy that will have a deep emotional talk with you, but, like, you can still talk to him, and, like, I... Yeah. I love my dad, and, like, I don't wish he were more like that, because I'm not like that either. Right. And... Yeah, no, I don't think... I think it's all... Yeah, Like, watching just, your family, it feels like it makes sense how everyone communicates. It seems like everybody's comfortable that way. Yeah, it's it's more of, like, a comfort thing. And yeah, and I just... It's just... It's really, I don't like, know how to be a part of it's it. It's difficult you know? to kind of, like... If you grew up in that kind of environment, it's difficult to sometimes switch, switch gears and, like... Right. You kind of have to find people who are also kind of like that, which isn't... There are people like that, mm -hmm. but if you're the one person who's kind of an asshole, 
people are gonna be like, uh, are you just like a bitch? Do you think you're better than everybody else? Like, right. no, I just like to make jokes. Yeah. Like, I, I usually my jokes are self-deprecating too. Like, it's not like I'm, I'm making fun of or attacking you personally. It's just like I will, you know, I'll jump on it a chance to say a joke. Yeah. And like, because I'm like, I don't know, like it's it's easier for me to to do that than try to eloquently or like not even eloquently because sometimes I try that too hard and people just it goes over their heads and I feel like right. hurt. But like I don't really like know how to have small talk because yeah. not only that do I not know how to have it, I just don't value that kind of conversation and like. I mean, and part of it is that like the way, like, I think it's normal to have like everybody in a group mostly be like jokes and jabs and stuff but like i'm just not really acclimated to your family's sense of humor because first of all i mean it's very like conservative humor which i didn't grow up with at all so for me it's like you know i don't know how to keep up like there's a lot of the things that are said in your family as jokes in my family might give you a get you a sidelong glance you know like a lot of things yeah, that would be like edgy. a room silence yeah it's not not because of edginess <laughs> my family's edgy as fuck just in a different way yeah no it's, it's they're edgy about I mean, different that's kind things, of the point you know? right like like your dad a might spectrum. your dad will be like oh fucking lib cucks and my mom will be like oh fucking conservatives you know like and they're they're both just going to dismiss that other side out of hand but like it just means that i hear certain things from your family that I have to think about it to realize it's funny you know like I have to often think about it to go okay that's funny you know because like it's not something I've ever heard pitched as funny it's stuff that I, I the mean, people who I grew up around would think was unfunny you know yeah but like not that I think it's unfunny just that I don't register it as a joke I register yeah. it as like huh oh okay yeah, all right. I guess that's fine. I've been in tons know. of situations where people have like completely different political views and like ideologies and stuff and I mean, you get used to it. Like if you watch the Daily Show, you can still think it's funny. I don't like Colbert Report like and I like he has like has his own talk show right now. Yeah. But like I can't stand that Colbert. Awful. Um I think he's like, you know, bankrupt and shallow, but I could like enjoy the Daily Show. I can I enjoy SNL. I don't like the Daily good. Show, by the way. Um, just for the record, uh, you know, like South Park, even though it's kind of like you know progressive humor. But I don't know if I like South Park has always been just like um, I, anarchic. Yeah, but I mean, like like Comedy Central, anything that's on that is like they're writing for a particular audience. There uh, isn't really, like, a whole lot of uh, conservative humor unless you go online. It really like, depends on your viewpoint because, like, I think it... De like, there's a lot of liberals who think that South Park is conservative. Like, because it shits on them, too. Yeah, I mean, it's kind it's of like, like... It's like you only really take offense if it happens to offend you in particular, you know? And so, like, I think that people on any side will have the impression that it's for the other side if it insults their guy, you know? I mean, like, DeVue's the biggest conservative I know and he loves fucking South Park, you know? So, like, it's hard for me to imagine thinking of it as, it's like, a It's more of a social commentary than, than political, but... Yeah. I definitely think the people who, like... Who fucking writes South Park? Trey, Trey Parker, Parker and Yeah. They definitely are not like super conservative. Well, no, but they but are. Also they're not like super liberal. Yeah, they're they're fine. I I'm not saying that like, I don't know what I'm even saying. It's just like, <laughs> I think it's funny that you find it difficult to kind of make those jokes because I usually feel that way whenever I hang out with anybody. Like oh what? Like oh that that's funny, but like. I don't think like that. Yeah, no, I feel like, that way around everybody. <laughs> like, I feel that way about around everybody except for basically the PCP. And we have a very distinctive style of humor that I wouldn't expect anybody else to really understand. Which is why it's funny that, like... Like, the PCP has always been, a, a, especially the podcast, has always been strange because we've always treated it like something that 
would eventually get big if we just made it better. But, like, the reality is that, like, it is inherently cult because we're all just fucking insane. Like, there's no wider audience that's going to understand the humor style of the PCP. That's never going to happen. It's never going to grow to the level of, like, you know, like the dick show. Because the dick show appeals to, like, a much larger demographic of comedy. And, like, if you want to understand how, just listen to, like, me calling into the dick show. And, like, you immediately realize how, like, the style of podcast that I would fit on is just so different from the style of podcast that that show is, you know? Yeah. And, like... You guys are way younger and, you know, are definitely, like, different values, different, different audiences entirely. I, I think it's a lot to do with just that everyone in the PCP is very much about, like, we want to be as obscure like we think it's funny to be as obscure as possible yeah. like and i don't mean that in the way of like just referencing obscure stuff though that's part of it like just the more inanely bizarre something that comes out of your mouth is the funnier it is and so like we breed memes instantaneously out of like like when we you know, when, when me and Munchie and Nate were at Anime Expo, the big meme that emerged was that GIMP can do anything Photoshop can do, but better and for free! And literally all night, Munchie and Nate were just back and forth making GIMP jokes for, like, hours on end. And, like, I can easily imagine why someone else would not even think it's funny at all. And then we start referencing it on the podcast, and we'll do it all the time because we think it's funny. Mm -hmm. And it's like how many people out there are gonna think this is funny the way we do like how many people even know what gimp is much less why it's funny to suggest that it could do what photoshop could do but better and for free like it's pretty funny it's really hilarious like, if you know what gimp is i think and i what, think a lot like, of people will you know know what it is if people are listening to youtube podcasts they're probably but would they also think it's funny guys. to just insist that it's better like I just, think just, just that's the whole joke is just insisting that GIMP is better than Photoshop because it can do anything it can do but better and for free. Which part of the joke is also that it's not true, you know that yeah. like GIMP cannot do everything Photoshop can do. Um, but like, and we took it so far, memeing on it. But like, yeah, it's it's just it's all very obscure, and I feel like. I, you know, a big part of why I can hang out with those guys is that we all think that kind why of shit is Why are the worst funny. Pokemon in this game Shadow Pokemon? Sunflora? Sunflora? Yeah. At this stage in the game, like... Why? What are you new into me, game? Like, you're definitely not about to add some. Do you know, um, team. uh, Sunkern has the lowest stats in Pokemon? I do not. And also is, like, one inch tall, so the smallest Pokemon. Yeah. Um, have I said enough about mis misanthropy? Do I need to say? Have I? Do you have more thoughts on it? Cause like, for me, I just can't buy into the idea that people have more to offer <coughs> me than than what I've experienced. Like, yeah. sure, there's a time and place to be with people, but I right. I don't go out looking for you know what people you, to share things with. You've me. got me. Yeah, you you've set me up for something perfect. Um, because I used to have a motto and it's weird that I forgot this sort of and like after we came to Boston it kind of hit me big time that I remembered this sentiment that I used to always say I don't feel much need to travel the world because I don't see what makes other places more interesting than the place I'm in like I don't see why other than for sheer variety's sake I don't think any one thing is necessarily more interesting than any other thing like, you can have just as much fun exploring random parts of your own town that you haven't seen and thinking about the meaning of that location as you can going somewhere famous. And, like, usually the famous places, they've already been tapped out. Like, yeah. everything that there is to know about it and why it's interesting has been said. And, like, there's a tourist industry built there. And, like, you can't just experience it in a sort of personal way because it's been structured around being experienced you know whereas like 
some of my yeah, most- Yeah, you're not gonna go back in time and experience the Colosseum the way it was intended. You're gonna right. have the crafted experience that the tourist, tourist bureau in, a, right. in Italy has crafted for you. And like, meanwhile, I can just walk down some random road and like, in my hometown, and find, you know, something I haven't seen before, or just like a, an area that like I can imagine why this exists or what could be done there, or like, you know, and like that fascination drove a lot of my writing back before um, before I became a YouTuber. Like, I used to always try to write about Virginia Beach as like a town where everything is boring but everything's exciting, because mm -hmm. like. There's nothing there that's particularly noteworthy, but you can have fun just looking at random shit. And, like, I think that I attributed too much of my boredom with Virginia Beach to the city itself as opposed to the fact that I just wasn't hanging out with anybody anymore. That, like, I was not... I loved Virginia Beach, and I always, like, talked about how I thought I was, like, from there, and I wrote all these albums and stories about living there. Mm -hmm. Until when I stopped hanging out with my friends and like got bored and like I was just driving to the same couple of places because I'm not going to adventure by myself like when I'm by myself I'm just going to do what's comfortable and what I know because going into an unknown place when you're by yourself there's no one to share that with yeah. you know whereas like I used to adventure with Victor a lot and shit like that so like when me and you go places everywhere we go is equally interesting to me because it's not interesting because of the place it's interesting because i went somewhere with you and, and we had, had a an memory. experience right yeah and so like when we came to boston it was like that quickly started that like became apparent very fast when we would go into the city and we'd be like okay this was cool to see once but like what like i guess because of the fact that like the actual town we live in is already so interesting to me that it was kind of like I, I was almost more intrigued by this area than I was by the actual downtown Boston because like again because you're gonna see some cool things in Boston but once you've been there you know it's all the high-end stores right. it's all the high-end coffee places and it's like sure you can have a good time going to the high-end bookstore with all the progressive books but you could also have just as good of a time going to the Asian grocery store down the road. Right, which is more interesting to me. Like, I've seen a... There is cool stuff in Boston, but, like, it's it's cool. It's the same kind of cool stuff that you'll find in any big city because big cities yeah. are all built around having this certain type of cool stuff. And, like, meanwhile, our town is, like, laid out in a really interesting way and there's lots of, like, obscure grocery stores and restaurants and like and none of it's any worse than like what's in the city every time i hang out with anybody there's this weird thing i've been noticing where people like want to go to like particular restaurants dude all restaurants are fucking the same like unless they're bad you know like any restaurant that costs like if you're paying 10 over 10 dollars for a dish and it's not a bad restaurant, it's gonna be good. You're not gonna get a monumentally better experience by picking the one that had five stars over the one that had four stars on Google because Google reviews are completely oh, not worthwhile. Oh, yeah, Google reviews, like, uh, use them to, like, figure out if the service is gonna be bad, if you care so much about that. Yeah. Like, I think... I mean, what a lot of people don't realize is like the difference is in the atmosphere and the the service and like, right. do you really care that much? Yeah. I I don't think it's, people our age like particularly care that it's much. It's like when you look at the Google reviews, there's usually only like six or seven reviews, and it's the people who like are really gung ho about reviewing right. who don't have the same kind of values that exactly. you would have going and, to a and restaurant. And none of them are like descriptive. None of them tell you like some like usually the negative reviews. Yeah, they might give you something descriptive, but it usually sounds like so, something that would be a one time deal that would yeah. not be a common occurrence. And it's like. There's so many places, like, for, also, nothing ever has less than, like, a 3.2. Like, if, if something actually has a score below 3, I might be honestly wary, but I've never seen it before. It's always, like, 3.4 I've seen some hotels to five. and stuff that have been, like, two hotels, stars. Hotels, I would be wary about. Yeah. Hotels are different, because hotels are scary. But, like, restaurants, it's, like, unless it's a filthy restaurant with, like, that's 
you know, okay. unless it belongs Chinese on Kitchen places Nightmares, it's and probably Mexican fine. places, I'm like always a little bit wary of. Like, I will check their review just to like, did this person get food sickness? Like, is the food yeah. cooked? But uh, I really haven't had too many like terrible restaurant experiences. They've all no. been like wait waiters didn't check on you and stuff. Right. Like usually the places that we and mark off that we're not going back to. Honestly, is, like, as a twenty something, I care most about value more than like yeah. what kind of music they're playing at the restaurant or like what the Unless lighting's it's fucking like. Country, then then we gotta escape. Yeah. But, like, it, it's just it's really funny to me. Like if you go to any Thai place, like they've all got the same stuff. They all cost a. I mean, there, there's a little bit of a price range and a little bit of a quality range, but you're not really gonna notice the difference unless you try all of them. And it's not gonna be a linear experience of the one that was higher rated was the better one or the one that was more expensive was the better one. It's like you have to find the one that just cooks things the way you like. Yeah. You know, like. Three different places might cook their their basil fried rice a little differently, or they might present it a little differently. But like, there's no objective standard to judge them against. It's just like go to all three, and which one did you like the most? You know. Um, so it's really funny to me when people are like, "Let's go into the city and go to this like restaurant." And I'm like, dude, there's like 80 restaurants that are great within like a fucking th stone's throw of our house. You know. Um, I mean, some like. To me, it wouldn't be worth it to go all the way into the city of Boston for a restaurant. No, not because at all. Because there's plenty of places here that we haven't had experiences with. And, yeah. like, to me, I would like to, and to eat at all the good places. Like, there's good restaurants everywhere. I mean, okay, I used to live in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and there was not a lot of restaurants. Not Tulsa, uh, Muskogee, Oklahoma. Tulsa's, like, the city next to it. You could, like, go to all the restaurants if you lived there a month and, like, went went out twice a week. You would you would honestly go to all of the restaurants there, but that's not, like, a... I mean, uh, the thing is, though, that, like, you can go... Like, I thought when we moved here that, like, variety of restaurants was going to matter to me. That, like, oh, it's cool that there's, like, a hundred restaurants we could try. But the reality is that once you find one you really like in a certain category, it's, like, why even go to another one? Like... When we moved here, I was really excited about how many Thai places there are, but the one that's right by our house is super good, and, and so the it's atmosphere like, is great. Like, so why are it's we like, should cheat we drive? On it? Should we drive 15 minutes to the next one just to try a different one, or should we just drive three minutes to the one we already like? Like, why? Why would we need to go any farther? You know, and like back when we lived in Rochester, we lived I would really say far that, out of the way. But that place doesn't have very good curry. No? Like, I, when I got curry there, well, I was like, Well, if we like, want to try uh -huh. curry, we should go to but a different But everything else they have is, like, really good if you just, like, wanted, like, meat and rice, but... Yeah. Like, I, it's just... Yeah, I mean, it'd be fair to say, like, let's go to a different one and try their curry, you know, and see, like... And then when you have a craving for curry, drive all the way out to that one. But if you don't have a craving for curry, drive to the one closer. These are all fair things to, to consider. Um... But there's also the matter of, like, how often do you even eat each of these cat Like, Thai food is not cheap. It's, no, it's you're not, not going like a, to Thai food once so, a week. Right. So, like, if we're only going once every three weeks, I'm probably going to get the same thing. Because yeah. the whole reason I'm going is I want to eat that thing, yeah. you know? It's like, I'm either going to get the basil fried rice and a, and a Tom Ka soup, or I'm going to get, like, a green curry and a... Tom Yum soup, you know, like mm -hmm. it's, it's gonna be one of those pretty much. So, yeah, I just don't think that like having a huge variety of restaurants is really all that helpful unless you have banging money. And it's funny because when we moved in to Rochester, I had banging money, and variety of restaurants mattered to me because we were eating out like every night, and so I wanted to go to a different place every night. But, like, as time went on and we bore through all the restaurants and there was a lot of them that we crossed off, not worth going to, like, we kind of settled into the ones we liked. And then at some point we were like, I don't want to spend so much money and we also don't like spending so much time eating out. So it was like, okay, well, now we're mostly going to the places that you can just pick up food from. Well, some of those are closer. Let's go to the ones that are closer to the house. And eventually it was like, we just go to the same three places, you know? Because it's like, those are the three that fit our lifestyle. Yeah. Of not wanting to spend too much money, not wanting to have too much hassle, wanting to be able to eat at home while we watch anime, 
And it's like, so that's what it boils down to. And the same things kind of happen here, except that it's even farther because now we're cooking at home. So like we went from the stage of let's experiment and go to different places to the stage of that's costing too much money. Let's just eat at the places nearby to that's costing too much money. And now you can cook. So let's just cook, you know, uh, and it's been great. I've had no complaints about the cooking life, you know? I mean, I love cooking. I love trying. Like, I can, like, make complicated recipes, so... Yeah. It's always fun to, like, make dinner that night. Um, it, it just, like, the joy of going out to eat is, like, I know what the experience is gonna be. Yeah. I've done, like... I still haven't had, like, a Brazilian steakhouse or, like, certain, certain things, but... Yeah. I've eaten, I've eaten most places. If I really wanted an exciting dinner, I would, like, get hot pot or fondue. Can, can I just raise a complaint about the fact that all burgers taste exactly the same? And so anytime somebody's like, oh, we gotta go to this place, it's got great burgers. I'm just like, dude, I know what it's gonna be. Like, I've had burgers. They're never, like, exceptionally different, you know? It's like, yeah, if you have a good burger, it's like... Yeah, and then it's what you put on top of it. Like, some places are, like, yeah. you know, they have, like, the crazy burgers, but I'm just not that into burgers. I, even I think all the crazy ones taste the same. Like, no matter what you put on a burger, it's just going to taste like you're eating a whole bunch of fuck. Yeah. Like, I had a, I had a, what I would describe as a great burger at a place called Bit Bar that we went to in Salem yesterday. I'll give a thorough review of this place in the next two weeks' review. But the burger, I got something, it was an elk burger on a dosant, which is a donut croissant. It kind of tasted like a like a McGriddles bun, but it was like this burger was like it's the burger super tender, you know, you, you go right through it, you're like, "Oh yeah, like this is a, about as good as a burger can get." How would I describe the taste? It tastes like a fucking burger. Even though it's a different animal and It's just a fucking burger. Yeah. It tastes like any burger. Like the, the dos sandwich tastes just like if you had gotten syrup on your burger or if you had gotten, like, fucking some other shit. Like, you know, all the toppings, like, they always just coalesce into the same flavor. It's like you can either get a burger that kind of tastes like barbecue, a burger that kind of tastes spicy, or a burger that tastes like, you know, the lettuce tomato stuff or like a maple burger. Like those are the only four real categories of burgers. It doesn't matter what combination of flavors you put on there. Like you're never gonna taste the bacon. It's always gonna be like you get a hint of bacon infused in this mush of everything else, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know, I just feel like burgers always taste exactly the same. And any anytime, like I've been to so many places that people have told me have great burgers and they're all the same place. It's like, yeah, I mean, of course, like, burgers aren't hard to make, you know? No, that's the thing. They're not hard to make, and, like, you can you can make them pretty well at home. It's, it's really just, just about how good the beef is. Yeah, like, how, how good the quality of the meat is and how you season it. But you can, like, literally say that about anything like steak. Yeah. I like, think burgers are better when they're less complicated. Like, the burgers that you make at home, I like more than anything I can get at a restaurant. Because at a restaurant, they always try to give you the, like third pound fucking it's always like gigantic burger and it's like all it tastes like is too much ground beef to season properly like it just tastes like i'm eating a lot of grease and like there's so many toppings that none of them are distinct like my favorite burger is like well seasoned home cooked burger that's like regular size and just has ketchup and cheese on it yeah. And it's just like you really get the taste of that ketchup, you really get the taste of that cheese, and you really get the taste of that burger, you know? And like that's what I want. I want all the taste to be like front and center, not like muddied in all this other bullshit that just tastes like a grease explosion and makes your hands disgusting afterwards. I don't know how this became a burger rant, but that's just where I'm talking I went. about like, you know, restaurants and restaurants cuz I I'm, guess like the romance Sorry. of restaurants is kind of, you know... It's waned, it, for sure. I mean, I like doing it because... I, when, okay, when I was at college and, like, I ate at a dining hall, like, every day, going to a restaurant once a month was like, oh, yes. But now that I'm an adult and it's like I have the freedom to, to go out to eat whenever... There's a ton of places around me. It's not like this, this is something I can't get where I'm from. It's like I've... 
Yeah. It's the restaurant experience. Yeah. You're in a place. For me, it was a combination of like, before you and I started dating, I was very lonely and I would get tired of being in the house all day, every day. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I want an excuse to go out somewhere. And also I want to eat good food because I didn't know how to cook and nobody in my family does. But like, those two things don't matter anymore. Like, going, leaving the house is not like some some huge deal to me at this point because like I'm satisfied in the house I'm not like I don't have those feelings of being like lonely and cooped up and like oh god I need a change of scenery or I'm gonna die you know like I I feel fine and then like we can make good food so it's like I don't need to go out to get good food so like you know it, yeah it's like the, the 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 only real reason to go out is if it's like well we want to eat something we literally can't make like you know something that like is from a culture we don't understand yeah or maybe both are in the mood for different things or we just don't or i don't feel like cooking yeah like but like even then we're way more likely to go get fast food because again we just want to like take it home and watch anime and eat and like that's more fun than like waiting around like that's the thing about going to restaurants is just all the fucking waiting and it's like it, it's different if you're going with somebody who you don't talk to all the time. Like, yeah. if I had a... If Victor came up and we all went to a restaurant and we were, like, chatting about our fucking, you know, day... I mean, I think this is how most people go to restaurants who don't go, regu- like, you know, all the time. Like... I mean, okay, so there's old people who, like, go as a couple to restaurants every day because they don't have anything better to do with their money. Right. Like, I think that's what restaurants kind of exist for primarily is to like service those old people but like with you and me it's like when we go to a restaurant together it's like we have nothing to talk about because we live together and do everything together so there's no catching up to do it's not like oh what have you been up to today it's like we were literally sitting next to each other we're just like like in that phase of life and i think that will change they could the, be the busier we get or if we have kids it'll be like a date night kind of thing but right. for me like there's no reason to like i like going out to lunch because sometimes it, like it's, it's a good yeah. change of scenery and you get like the lunch discount and it's and it if you want to have something years. besides a sandwich right. or like a bowl of cereal like yeah lunch is fun but like going out to dinner to like a family restaurant especially like why would i even want to do that oh fuck family restaurants like why would I want to go to Friendly's when I can just yeah, make anything like, on the menu? I do not at like home. family restaurants at all. Um, but that's what a mid-priced restaurant usually is, right, unless yeah. you're going to get like foreign food. Um. Yeah, I guess. Uh, I guess this is all just my like disillusionment with the idea that there is more to the world than what I think there is, like that. That, like, I think that a lot of people view the world as being really big, and I don't at all. And I've made this point countless times, that I think the world is small, and that, like, you can see it all pretty easily, and most of it's not that different from each other. Most of it's kind of the same shit in a different toilet, and, like, you know, you can go to all the five-star restaurants, and they're gonna serve you the same dishes. You know, you're gonna, you can go meet people in different places, but they're all gonna act the same. They all, they're all gonna have the same mindset about things in general, you know? They're just living their life. Most people are just living their life. Most people are fucking boring. Most people are not doing anything horribly unique. And even if they are, you can figure out, out what they're doing from a distance, you know? Like, I really do like people for the art and food. I wrote that years ago and it's, it's only become more true. Like, and so, Something that occurred to me recently that I really wanted to, like, kind of codify and, like, live by is the idea of communicating with people just through my art. And I include something like this in that because from an outside perspective and the way that these like videos like this... Like, communicating, like, actually, like, not just surface level things because you have right. to communicate certain things to, to live. Right. But to communicate, like, what's actually in your heart and what you're thinking yeah. about. I think the best and really only real way to I guess I mean when I'm communicating for the sake of communicating yeah like to do it via because just talking to people individually is just frustrating to me and I don't feel like I get enough out of it 
I don't feel like I have a real need for people to know what I'm about or what's going on with me, because why would I? Like, I've got you. You are satisfying the need for on my part to, like, have somebody understand me and to feel that sense of, like, kinship and camaraderie that I need. Mm -hmm. But I don't need that from more people. I don't need to have a posse. I don't need a group of people. I just need, like, enough that I don't feel alone. But, like, I don't... Again, I don't get energy from groups. I don't like groupthink. I don't like clicks and communities. That's why I fucking... Fuck yo click nigga fuck yo community is the first line on my latest album because like I just really despise groupthink. Um enorminess, you know, like that's my enemy is 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 norms, social norms, like the the memes, the way that people all become to believe the same thing. And uh so like I would prefer if like, if you're going to try to communicate with me, consider whatever you're doing a creation. And, like, we've talked about this uh, in, like, commenter rules and stuff, that, like, when you're making a comment, you are creating a work of art, in a way. You're writing something. You're writing a piece to be consumed by an audience. Like, and when I perform on this show, it's like that, too. Like, this isn't what my everyday life is. It's not me sitting on a couch, watching someone play a video game, and ranting all the thoughts on my brain. Like, I prepare for these. I think about what I'm going to say on this show. I get, like, riled up. This one in particular has been, like, a week coming. Like, I've been, like, really amped up to give my misanthropy rant on this show. Um, and, like, you know, it's a prepared piece, even if it's not scripted or, or whatever. Um, you know, I can't just do this. Like, it's not like when... I think a lot of people approach me, like, wanting to, to talk or, or something, and, like, they're always shocked by how quiet I am in real life, and it's because I am cold. I am icy. I don't want to talk to people unless I feel like I'm in a context where I will have your full attention and where I can sort of put on a performance where I can be like, okay, I have the floor. Let me get out my chalkboard and fucking explain myself, you know? And, like, unless I, I get that, I just feel like I'd rather just shut up and, like, you know, I'd rather just be quietly in the back. But, like, if I'm in a scenario like this where I have the floor, it's different. And I just think that it's easier for me if I only communicated with people in creations, you know, like if, if, if it wasn't small talk chat, trying to understand each other. Cause like, if you read the responses I give to people on discord, for instance, it's like, I can't, I don't even know how, like I, I sound fucking inept in my responses on there where like people ask me questions and I give the most weird one line answers and they immediately cause confusion and miscommunication and I can't really disambiguate it because I just can't type fast enough to yeah. do it. Like, I can't do it in writing. I can't just come up, like, and people aren't asking the right questions. And it's just like, if you're gonna approach me, formulate your approach. And so, like, I really want to try to apply this to whatever changes I make to my Patreon. Because right now, my Patreon is kind of awkward in that... The shows that I will naturally produce are the ones that are like this. I do two weeks review. It's basically the same thing as this show. It's me and you on a couch ranting for an hour and a half, you know. Um, it's very easy for me to do that show because I like doing it and it's my style of content. But then there's stuff where, like, I, I am supposed to do monthly live streams, which I've not been able to for the last few months. Um, and... Like, those have the, the the problem of being, like, weird, disjointed communication. And, like, in those ones, I don't feel like my performance is usually that bad. Because I kind of treat it where, like, I just go on and on in response to every person. Like, I do feel like I have the floor. But, like, it kind of created a scenario where you could only ask me a certain sort of type of question. Like, something that would make sense in this context. And, like, now that I'm doing live streams all the time anyways... It's not you, really you anything on offer. You have the opportunity to ask the question at any yeah. time. There's no particular reason why this live stream would... Be special. Yeah, would make yeah. that answer any different. Um, 
And it, you also kind of like the whole live stream relies on what people are asking in the first place, which doesn't yeah. really make for an interesting piece of content. Anything, for the, for the not that that it needs to be interesting because i think what people like about it is a chance to to talk with you and like what a lot of people right. do is they like oh i'm gonna play a game and you can play a game with me and be in the call or something yeah like i just want to i want to find some way to formulate my patreon around like around the type of communication that i am comfortable with and good at so that it will happen more because, like, stuff like the the Discord, like, there is a community in there. And, uh, like, you know, I, I it's not like I want to get rid of it or anything. I, I think it's fine for what it is. But, like, I just don't know how to treat it like a patron reward. I don't know how to, like, participate in it myself and make it, like... I can't be at the center of something like that. I can't be at the center of a group of people talking to each other in words. Because That's if so I could, weird. I wouldn't need... A discord group I could just go join an existing group of people and communicate that way you know mm -hmm. like there's no real purpose to a group centered around me other than that it can group together people who all you know who think somewhat similarly in that they enjoy my content but like and like understand where you're coming from they're not gonna right. like fight you like oh you don't like people yeah. What is wrong with you? You need to get out of your room more. There's something wrong with you. Like, yeah. I don't like what you're doing. It's like, no. These people are uh, supporting... Not necessarily supporting this behavior, but, like, understand that this is how you are and doesn't uh -huh. really impact the job that you're doing. Yeah, and that's that's the other thing is, like... Um, the, Munchie was like this, and I know a lot of people who are like this, where they view... They view creation creation as like you have to constantly be challenging yourself to have new experiences and like meet new people and do new things and like that's the only way that you'll learn new shit i don't feel like i learn anything new that way i don't feel like talking to new people or going to new places teaches me anything new i feel like i go there and i go oh it's exactly what i expected and like there there's usually nuances in particular that will give me something to talk about and maybe they'll inspire me in some way, but it's not more so than what I could get from, you know, like I, like I said earlier, like you could just go in your neighborhood and be inspired and learn a little bit, you know, yeah. like we took a trip to Salem, Massachusetts. And again, I'm going to talk about it on the, the, the next two weeks review. And like, I learned some things and it is, it's interesting what I learned, but like, not only are those lessons not necessarily unique to that location, but they're also not necessarily more valuable than a lesson I could have learned by, you know, going around the block and looking at something. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, it's just hard for me to, like, consider prioritizing this idea of, like, constantly throwing yourself out there into new stuff when most of the things that I encounter just frustrate me, and I'd rather just, like... I'd rather dive into my own mind to try to look... I, I think I've been almost, like, held back by the fact that I've been trying so hard to, like, communicate with other people more. Like, I feel like me trying to... Me trying to understand, like, what people want from me and me trying to, like, you know, like, acquiesce to the, de like, the, the seeming demands of my audience has run me off the rails more so than got me back on it. Like, yeah. I didn't start off doing it that way. I started off just doing whatever the fuck I want and whatever I thought was a good idea. So, like, that's that's sort of what I'm trying to get back to. And it's it's funny because the, the two projects that I'm kind of working on right now are a big project on Log Horizon and a big project on the Tales of series. And they're both very much just, like, I, I just fucking decided that's what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. You know, like, it came down to, like, there was a lot of ideas. There was a lot of things I could do. And, like, we watched Log Horizon, and I was just like, fuck it. I'm going to break the show down in depth because, like, I love this show, and this is what I want to do. And people can people can decide if they're interested when they see it. But, like, I know I have – I know I want to talk about this, you know. And, like, with the Tales of series, I feel similarly where, like – 
that one's more of like it is a good idea but like i had a huge list of stuff that i could do for im games and that was the one that called to me where i was like for some reason i think i can do this and that it will it will interest me i will learn something that i will value it won't be me like playing a game i don't care about because i think other people will want to hear me talk about it you know um it will be like no, I want to know, I personally want to know how all the Tales games have changed over time, so I'm going to study it, and I'm going to figure it out, you know? And that passion is kind of what makes your videos, like, so great. Yeah, and it's what will drive me to do, like, real research and go all out, where, like... Which is what people, you, you know, know, really value from you. So, yeah, I, I hope that'll, I hope that it'll come through and uh, be interesting, but, like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just, like, burrowing... I'm tunneling, 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 tunneling. And like, I, I also, I haven't been like really explaining myself in the depth that I used to on like the decisions that I make because I've, I've just gotten so, again, it's like I've gotten tired of having to bridge that gap all the time. Like I'm tired of always having to explain myself of people just assuming that there was no logic behind what I did, and then I have to explain the logic, and they go, oh, now I get it. And I'm like, why don't you just come at it from the beginning with the approach of, there must be logic here, let me try to understand it. And that's usually that what will inspire me to talk about my logic. It's like when I see someone else make an attempt, and I'm like, oh, it's really interesting that you thought that, but here's what the real intentions were. You know, mm -hmm. like that's what inspired me to make the Ghosts of Win Midwinter Ballers uh, breakdown was like that guy made an interpretive video and I went well since you tried let me show you what I think you know yeah. but like um yeah I guess I'm done talking now are you all right you, yeah uh, I, I see saved right I'm good all right everybody I hope you enjoyed this very misanthropic episode of Pokemon Coliseum it's okay if you think people suck Go with your gut instinct. Yeah. Don't try to don't try to like change try to nature because in the end you're gonna like. Don't let them meme you. I mean, when you grow up, a lot of the time, like you're probably not gonna have the same friends that you had before, and just understand that like people are certain ways, and that's okay. Don't let them meme you. Yeah. Have a beer, but only if you want to. Don't drink it every day because it'll make you fat and gross. But yeah. Bye.